I'm Richard from Beyond the Van and I'm going to show you my Luton van conversion. So starting on the outside, I'm going to start with my main feature, which is the built-in balcony. It was originally the tail lift, uh, so the van was, when I bought it, a three and a half ton Luton furniture van and this was the original tail lift for lifting furniture and everything else up and what I've done is I've put AstroTurf on the tail lift to make it like a balcony and the bike rack is on the back as well and that basically enables me to have a balcony and the bikes without having to take it all off uh, when I want to use it. So moving on round the van now I've got various storage compartments and locker boxes. Uh, the one at the back, for instance, has got the hose pipe reel in there. So when I need to find somewhere for water, I just drag the hose out, kick to a tap, turn the tap on and just wait for it to fill nice and easy. I haven't got to sort of mess around, which is really handy if you're using a four quart tap that's a little bit iffy whether you're supposed to be there. So underneath as well, I've got the 50 or 60 litre underslung LPG tank. That fuels the cooker, the water heater, the gas heating that's in there, and various other bits and pieces that, that I might need. Really handy, it's nice and tucked out of the way, and of course it's really cheap to fill up, so 20 odd pounds and that tank is full, so compared with a Keller bottle, for instance, it's really worthwhile. Because of the size of the fuel tanks on this van, only being 60 litres, and the size of the van, I have actually fitted two fuel tanks, so it's twin tank. So the one tank is, is there and the other one is round the back on the opposite side. When you're abroad and take a wrong turn like I'm really good at, you can then often find that you've got 100 miles to drive before you find a petrol station, which is not cool when you're kind of running out. So the twin tanks really does help. Moving around to the front of the van, Nothing particularly amazing on the front apart from the Land Rover style spare wheel mounted on the bonnet and the reason for that is I used every bit of space inside and under the van and I had nowhere else to put the spare wheel so I thought I'll stick it on the bonnet and actually it does look kind of cool so it, it all works. On the roof, this is something that's a, a little bit unusual probably for a Luton van, is a boat or a kayak. I will admit I haven't actually used this kayak yet, I've only used my blow up one so far, but I bought this and made a roof rack so that when I get to a nice hot country, this is my plan, nice hot country, I can just sit on the water, float around and enjoy myself. So that bit's still to come, so we'll, we'll wait for that one. But basically, the boat up there, I lower it down from the front and drop it in the water and then pop it back up again. I'm making it sound really easy, there is a knack to it and I haven't quite got the knack yet, but I'm working on it. The other thing with the boat is when it's just sitting on the roof, it actually catches rainwater. So the water that lands in the boat is piped across the roof through a filter and when I want it to, straight into my water tank. So the van is completely off grid. 550 watt of solar panels on the roof, combined with collecting its own water. I'm never going to run out of power. Four leisure batteries in the front. It's basically perfect for whales. And moving around to the other side, I've got something quite <clears throat> unique on this side, which is a large storage cage, which basically is actually unlocked and it's not supposed to be, so that's really dodgy, but I can, now I can show you. It's a really big cage where I can store firewood and, well, basically anything, but I tend to store the firewood in there. Really handy because obviously having a wood burner on board, I do get through a lot of wood in the winter. I can't store it inside really. That cage is absolutely perfect. All the way back to the back of the van now. And on this back corner, we've got the toilet emptying cassette point, the nice bit that we don't want to talk about. And the other fuel tank I mentioned. There is another reason for having the two fuel tanks and that is the van is dual fuel. The one tank has diesel, the other tank has veg oil. The engine has been adapted to run on the veg oil. It's preheated as it goes through and it's got electronic changeover between the two tanks. While we're on the subject of the engine, it's also got a hydrogen fuel cell fitted. So the vehicle is running on 
very economical fuel and almost free fuel to a degree because the hydrogen cell is whilst driving is powered by the solar panels so I really have got some cheap fuel going on there on a good run bearing in mind this van weighs just short of five ton on a good run I can actually still get 30 miles to the gallon so I'm pretty chuffed with that welcome to my kitchen and I say that as if I'm a gourmet chef but I'm not I can't actually cook but I have got the facilities here most of the stuff I've used in the kitchen is actually from a domestic house so starting with the cooker we've got a full-size domestic cooker four burner hob which surprisingly is clean which is quite lucky considering I'm on video and I've also got underneath the oven and grill as well having lived in caravans for a lot of years the size of the cookers I often found to be not great because once you've got one pan on there you can't usually fit a second one on there might have been the caravans that I was in they're probably different now but that's how I found it I've also used a domestic sink and domestic cooker extractor which I actually got from the car boot sale for five pounds for the pair brand new so I did pretty well with those I was quite chuffed with those underneath we've got the three-way fridge which runs off gas 12 volts or mains most of the time I run it off the gas but when I'm in a nice warm country hopefully soon I can put the inverter on and the solar on the roof will power the fridge all day long without draining the batteries so in effect I've got free cooling which is hopefully going to be ideal storage wise I've got uh, a drawer for the cutlery and everything and extra cupboards and what have you down here where the water pump and everything is nicely tucked away up here there is storage for food bits and pieces I've got the kitchen utensils and everything hanging up saucepans and everything are on the wall as well the only thing the kitchen really lacks is worktop space so once the cooker is uh, in use the worktop space disappears so what I've done to counteract that is the dining table which normally goes over in the in the seating area can just slot into the space here and provides extra worktop space so when I do learn to cook I can actually prepare the food and now for the exciting bit or at least the practical part that is the bathroom so to the left we've got a shower cubicle the one thing I really wanted when I built the van was a separate shower and toilet so once you've had a shower in the morning you're not having to then get wet feet for the rest of the day so a separate cubicle it is works really well got the glass doors across the front of it there's also a fan in the cubicle as well that runs pretty much permanently and that keeps it nice and dry so within a couple of hours of having a shower the cubicle is actually nice and dry and that really does help with the moisture levels in the van to the right is the cassette toilet electric flush straight off the main water tank nice and easy above there is the little wash basin storage cabinet and the Morco instant water heater the way that works is as soon as the hot water tap is turned on the boiler fires up and heats the water as it goes through so there's no having to wait for a tank of water to heat up under the van is the 70 litre water tank if you're so inclined you could have a 70 litre shower not that you would but you can so it's all there nice and straightforward another feature of the bathroom is this stained glass window on the bathroom door just a quirky feature doesn't serve any purpose whatsoever but it looks nice on the inside of the door a little fold-up stool and the idea of that is when the kitchen worktop is extended I've got something to sit up to it with my laptop when I'm doing video editing or computer work or whatever keeps me out of the way and does the job very well welcome to my living space my living room ironically the first thing that somebody sees when they walk into my van is this bar behind me with my optics I'm not an alcoholic I promise but you've got to have one haven't you they're there because I like them it looks cool and it's nice to have a drink so there you go that bit that bit, that, that bit is explained that's that's enough so the living space I've got the corner sofa which are made up of caravan sofa cushions you can seat five maybe six people in here not necessarily comfortably but I have had six people sitting in here on an evening and it has worked okay sitting around the wood burner it's been quite nice below the sofa on this side is a full-size pull-out drawer which is really good for food storage and what have you and on the other side is a cupboard split into different compartments again more storage 
you can't have too much storage. Although I would say the more storage you've got, the more you need. Overhead, more storage. This is for clothes. Um, I'd be brave enough to open it slightly so everything doesn't fall out. I'm not the neatest of people when it comes to being um, tidy with putting things away. Over here, I have a, not a television. I don't have a television, don't like them. But I have got a large computer monitor hooked up to a Blu-ray player, which actually I never use, but the thought is there if I do want to do it. Behind the monitor is, if I just, might probably just about see it, the various gauges and things. So the gas tank level, the water meter for the water tank, and the various other bits of storage in there as well. So all this, the messy stuff kind of tucked away neatly behind the computer monitor that doesn't get used. And that just folds away and that's it, forgotten about. So the main feature of the living space, most people will probably say is the wood burner. This is actually a five or six kilowatt domestic wood burner, which is insane for this size of space. I have actually sat when it's been minus 10 outside and it's been 30 something degrees inside with the doors open. I've been in a t-shirt that actually does happen, which is kind of cool. But when you go to bed in that heat, it's not so great. But the wood burner is really good as a secondary heating for the van. I've also got a Propex, a 1600 compact unit built in as well. The idea behind that is on cold winter nights, because I live in the van full time, when the temperature drops to ridiculous degrees, the Propex kicks in on a thermostat and just brings the temperature up nicely. It's not the quietest of units, but it's better than getting out of bed at five degrees in the morning to try and light the wood burner. So it does work quite well. Over this side, we have, well, first of all, in the center is the sliding doors. These are the patio doors into the cab. One thing I had always worried about with a Luton van is the fact that the driving, well, the cab, area is separate to the living area so because I wild camp all year round if I ever did need to move off quickly in the night I couldn't just jump in the front and go so I've tunneled through into the front put some sliding doors on there put a little blind on there as well that just gives me that extra peace of mind also when I leave my phone or something in the cab once I've settled in the back I can just nip through and get it which is quite cool the instruments are more ornaments I can't actually play any of them but the thought is there. One day when it's a rainy day and I'm sitting in the van, I will learn to play the guitar. The ukulele I've managed a little bit, but you know, I'm not very musical, but they look cool if nothing else. Additional storage is the jars, which a lot of people comment on. I will admit I did pinch that idea off another van blog, but it does work really well. Those bits and pieces that you just haven't got room for in the cupboards and things, the jars are just screwed to the bottoms of the cupboard and then you just unscrew the jar from the lid. So extra storage really good and on to the most important part of the van the bedroom or at least the bed i've got a full size mattress above the cab which is a really comfy bed it is quite close to the ceiling but once you've sat up in the middle of the night once you won't do it again so it's not a problem the one thing that i really wanted in the van was a fixed bed because to make the bed up each night was something that i had been doing in a caravan previously and it drove me up the wall so a fixed bed was a must and by having the space over the cab it's worked out absolutely perfectly above the bed i've got the skylight which slides back completely so i can just lie in bed looking at the stars or wake up in the middle of the night when it's pouring with rain getting quite damp that has happened a few times but it's just yeah van life the way it goes Got a window in the bedroom as well, it's a bit of ventilation, more cupboards in the bedroom area. And so yeah, it's actually a really cosy bed. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe now and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video. If you want to support us and help continue making our videos, then join us on Patreon from only $1 a month. See you on the next one.